Hello dear learners, my name is, Muna Jones. Today we are discussing. Chemotherapy. Introduction. Cancer diseases are one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality throughout the world. Currently about 60% of cancer patients will receive radiation therapy at least once during their illness, while more than half of these patients will receive chemotherapy. The four treatment modalities used to treat cancer are chemotherapy, radiation therapy, surgery, and biotherapy. According to the Concise Medical Dictionary, 2007, page 130,610 and 496, chemotherapy is defined as treatment or prevention of disease by use of chemical substances, and the term is restricted to the treatment of cancer with antimetabolities and similar drugs. While, radiotherapy is the treatment of disease with penetrating radiation such as X-rays, beta ray or gamma rays which are produced by machines or given off by radioactive isotopes. In contrast, nuclear medicine is the use of radionuclides especially technetium 99 meters as tracers to study the structure and function of the body. Chemotherapy. This is the treatment of cancer with an antineoplastic drug or with a combination of such drugs into a standardized treatment regime. Use. Chemotherapy may be used in six ways. 1. Adjuvant therapy A course of chemotherapy used in conjunction with another treatment modality such as surgery, radiation therapy or biotherapy and aimed at treating micrometastases. 2. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy administration of chemotherapy to shrink a tumor before it is removed surgically. 3. Primary therapy the treatment of patients who have localized cancer for which an alternative but less completely effective treatment is available. 4. Induction chemotherapy, the drug therapy given is the primary treatment for patients who have cancer for which no alternative treatment exists. 5. Combination chemotherapy, administration of two or more chemotherapeutic agents to treat cancer, this allows each medication to enhance the action of the other or to act synergistically with it. For example the widely known MOP regimen of nitrogen mustard, vincristine, oncovin, procarbazine, and prednisolone, this is used to treat patients with Hodgkin's disease. 6. Malablative therapy, dose-intensive therapy used in preparation for peripheral blood stem cell transplantation. Langhorns M. et al., 2007, Oncology Nursing, page 36. Chemotherapy drug classification. Chemotherapeutic drugs are classified in general groups according to their molecular structure, mechanisms of action and their effect on cell life. The primary effect of cytotoxic drugs is to interrupt cell replication. The following are the basic groups and their potential actions. Cell cycle phase specific, drugs are active on cells undergoing division in the cell cycle such as antimetabolites. Cell cycle phase non-specific, drugs are active on cells in either a dividing or resting state such as alkylating agents. 1. Alkylating agents, cell cycle phase non-specific agents. These act by damaging DNA, thus interfering with cell replication. Pleurambucil, indication, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's disease and ovarian cancer. Dose, usually 100 to 200 micrograms kilogram per oral daily for 4 to 8 weeks. Side effects, bone marrow suppression, severe widespread rash. 2. Antitumor antibiotics, cell cycle phase nonspecific agents. Bind directly to DNA, thus inhibiting the synthesis of DNA and interfering with transcription of RNA. Doxorubicin hydrochloride, indication, acute leukemia, lymphomas and a variety of solid tumors such as Kaposi's sarcoma. Dose, up to a maximum of 450 mg M2 body surface area infusion for 21 days. Side effects, nausea, vomiting, malosuppression, alopecia and mucositis. 3. Antimetabolites. Cell cycle phase specific agents. Mimic naturally occurring substances, thus interfering with enzymes function or DNA synthesis. Primarily act during S phase. Fluorouracil, indication, gastrointestinal tract carcinomas and breast cancer. Dose, 15 mg kg weekly, maximum in one day 1 gram per oral. Can be given intravenous injection or infusion, or by intraarterial infusion, consult product literature. Side effects, malosuppression, mucositis, and rarely cerebellar syndrome. 4. Hormones, cell cycle phase nonspecific. These are secreted by endocrine gland, alter the environment of the cell by affecting the cell membrane's permeability. By manipulating hormone levels, tumor growth can be suppressed. Hormone therapies are not cytotoxic and are therefore not curative. Dethylstilbestrol, indication, prostate cancer, 
postmenopausal women with breast cancer. Dose, 10 to 20 mg daily in breast cancer. 1 to 3 mg daily in prostate cancer. Side effects. Nausea, fluid retention, venous and arterial thrombosis. Impotence and genica mastia in men, withdrawal bleeding in women, hypercalcemia and bone pain may occur in breast cancer. 5. Antihormonal agents. They derive their ability to neutralize the effect of or inhibit the production of natural hormones used by hormone-dependent tumors. Tamoxifen. Indication, an estrogen receptor antagonist used in estrogen receptor positive metastatic breast cancer. Dose, 20 mg daily per oral. Side effects. Hot flushes, vaginal bleeding, suppression of menstruation in some premenopausal women, vaginal discharge, lightheadedness, tumor flares, fall in platelet count, leukopenia, neutropenia, alopecia, rashes, uterine fibroids, visual disturbances, pruritus bulvi, gastrointestinal disturbances, liver enzyme changes, nausea, occasionally fluid retention. 6. Nitrosaurias. Cell cycle phase nonspecific. They have the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier, synthesis of both DNA and RNA is inhibited. Carmistine, indication, Hodgkin's disease and some solid cancers such as myeloma, lymphoma and brain tumor. Dose, 7.7 mg implants 4 to 6 weeks for high-grade glioma, or intravenously or orally for 4 to 6 weeks. Side effects, nausea, vomiting, bone marrow damage and prolonged use, renal damage and delayed pulmonary fibrosis. 7. Corticosteroids, cell cycle phase nonspecific. They exert an anti-inflammatory effect on the body tissues, for instance they reduce intracranial or spinal cord compression and suppress lymphocytes. They may also promote a feeling of well-being and increase appetite. Dexamethasin, indication, nausea and vomiting with chemotherapy, suppression of inflammatory and allergic disorders, shock, cerebral edema, rheumatic disease, congenital adrenal disorder. Dose, 0.510 mg daily per oral. Side, effects, abdominal distension, dyspepsia, adrenal suppression, menstrual irregularities, weight gain, increased appetite, glaucoma, insomnia, increased intracranial pressure, fluid, and electrolyte imbalance, impaired healing, skin atrophy, bruising, depression. 8. Vinca plant alkaloids, cell cycle phase specific. They exert a cytotoxic effect by binding to microtubular proteins during metaphase, causing metodic arrest. The cell loses its ability to divide and dies. Vincristine sulfate, indication, acute leukemia, lymphomas and some solid tumors such as breast and lung cancer. Dose, 1 mg per milliliter injection. Side effects, abdominal pains, constipation, neurological toxicity such as peripheral paresthesia, loss of deep tendon reflexes, motor weakness. British National Formulary, 2008, number 56, pages 453 to 478. Radiation. This is the use of ionizing radiation in the treatment of patients with benign and malignant diseases. Mechanism of action. Radiation therapy works by damaging the DNA of cancerous cells, either directly or indirectly. This DNA damage is caused by one of two types of energy, photon or charged particles. Indirect ionization happens as a result of the ionization of water, forming free radicals, notably, hydroxyl radicals, which then damage the DNA. Direct damage to cancer cell DNA occurs through high let, linear energy transfer, charged particles such as proton, boron, carbon or neon ions which have an anti-tumor effect which are independent of tumor oxygen supply, because these particles act mostly via direct energy transfer usually causing double-stranded DNA breaks. They also more precisely target the tumor using the Bragg peak effect. Use. 1. To cure cancer by eradicating the disease. 2. For long-term control, when cure is not possible. 3. For palliation of symptoms to relieve pain, bleeding, obstruction or neurologic compromise. Dose. The radiation dose is expressed as the absorbed energy per unit mass. The gray, gi, is the standard unit for reporting dose. 1 gi equals 100 centigrade. Gi. The gi is equivalent to the rad. Factors which oncologist radiologist consider when selecting a dose including whether the patient is receiving chemotherapy, patient comorbidities, whether radiation therapy is being administered before or after surgery, and the degree of success of surgery. Fractionalization, or dividing the total dose into equal daily fractions, takes the advantage of the 4R apostrophe S apostrophe of radiobiology. Repair, is the ability of cells to recover from sublethal damage. 
Initially both normal and tumor cells can recover, but as the radiation dose accumulates, the ability of the tumor cells to repair damage decreases. Redistribution is based on the sensitivity of the cell to radiation at different phases of cell division. Dividing the radiation dose into smaller daily doses disrupts the cellular life cycle, causing a greater number of cells to enter the more radiosensitive metodic phase. Tumor cells may be more susceptible to redistribute than normal cells. Repopulation refers to regeneration of cells after radiation damage. Cellular repopulation that occurs between radiation fractions is greater in the normal tissue than in the tumor. Reoxygenation is based on the fact that the presence of oxygen enhances the effect of ionizing radiation, particularly when X-rays or gamma rays are the source. As tumor shrinks, oxygen-deprived core is exposed to the oxygen-rich blood supply, increasing the tumor's sensitivity to radiation. Administration of radiation therapy. Radiation can be delivered by three methods. 1. External beam radiation therapy or teletherapy. 2. Brachytherapy or sealed source radiation therapy. 3. Systemic radioisotope therapy or unsealed source radiation. 1. External beam radiation therapy. The following three sections refer to treatment using X-ray are as follows. Conventional external beam radiation therapy. Conventional external beam radiation therapy is delivered via two-dimensional beams using linear accelerator machines. It mainly consists of a single beam of radiation delivered to the patient from several directions, often front or back, and both sides. Conventional refers to the way the treatment is planned or simulated on a specially calibrated diagnostic X-ray machine known as a simulator because it recreates the linear accelerator actions. Stereotactic radiation. Stereotactic radiation is a specialized type of external beam radiation therapy which uses focused radiation beams targeting a well-defined tumor using extremely detailed imaging scans. Radiation oncologists perform stereotactic treatments, often with the help of a neurosurgeon for tumors in the brain or spine. There are two types of stereotactic radiation. Eye stereotactic radiosurgery, SRS, is when doctors use a single or several stereotactic radiation treatments of the brain or spine. I.e. Stereotactic body radiation therapy, SBRT, refers to one or several stereotactic radiation treatments with the body, such as the lungs. Brand names for these treatments include AZS, Cyberknife, Gamma Knife, Novelis, Primitum, Synergy, X-Knife, Tomotherapy, Trilogy and True Beam. Virtual simulation, three-dimensional conformal radiation therapy, and intensity modulated radiation therapy. The planning of radiation therapy treatment has been revolutionized by the ability to delineate tumors and adjacent normal structures in three dimensions using specialized CT and or MRI scanners and planning software. Though virtual simulation, the most basic form of planning, allows more accurate placement of radiation beams than is possible using conventional X-rays, where soft tissue structures are often difficult to assess and normal tissues difficult to protect. O three-dimensional conformal radiation therapy, 3D CRT, an enhancement of virtual simulation in which the profile of each radiation beam is shaped to fit the profile of the target from a beam's eye view, BEV, using a multi-leaf collimator, MLC, and a variable number of beams. O intensity modulated radiation therapy, IMRT, is an advanced type of high-precision radiation. IMRT also improves the ability to conform the treatment volume to concave tumor shapes, for example when the tumor is wrapped around a vulnerable structure such as the spinal cord or a major organ or blood vessel. Computer-controlled X-ray accelerators distribute precise radiation doses to malignant tumors or specific areas within the tumor. New techniques are being developed to better control this uncertainty, for example, real-time imaging combined with real-time adjustment of the therapeutic beams. This new technology is called image-guided radiation therapy, IGRT, or four-dimensional radiation therapy. Particle therapy. In particle therapy such as proton therapy, energetic ionizing particles, protons or carbon ions, are directed at the target tumor. The dose increases while the particle penetrates the tissue up to a maximum or the Bragg peak that occurs near the end of the particle's range and it then drops to almost zero. The advantage of this energy deposition profile is that less energy is deposited into the healthy tissue surrounding the target tissue. 2. Brachytherapy. Brachytherapy, internal radiation therapy, is commonly used as an effective treatment for cervical, prostate, breast, and skin cancer and tumors in many other body sites. Brachytherapy treatments are often known by their brand names. For example, brand names for breast cancer brachytherapy treatments include Savi, Mamocyte, and Contura.
Brand names for prostate cancer include Proxilin, Theracid. In brachytherapy, radiation sources are precisely placed directly at the site of the cancerous tumor causing irradiation to affect a much localized area, only while exposure to radiation of healthy tissues further away from the sources is reduced. 3. Radioisotope therapy, RIT. Systemic radioisotope therapy is a form of targeted therapy. Targeting can be due to the chemical properties of the isotope such as radioiodine which is specifically absorbed by the thyroid gland a thousand-fold better than other bodily organs. Targeting can also be achieved by attaching the radioisotope to another molecular antibody to guide it to the target tissue. The radioisotopes are delivered through infusion into the bloodstream or ingestion. Examples are the infusion of metaiodobenzylguanidine, MIBG, to treat neuroblastoma of oral iodine-131 to treat thyroid cancer or thyrotoxicosis, and of hormone-bound lutetium-177 and yttrium to treat neuroendocrine tumors, peptide receptor radionuclide therapy. Another example is the injection of radioactive glass or resin microspheres into the hepatic artery to radioembolize liver tumors or liver metastases. A major use of systemic radioisotope therapy is in the treatment of bone metastasis from cancer. The radioisotopes travel selectively to areas of damaged bone and spare normal undamaged bone. Side effects. The common side effects of radiation therapy include erythema or hyperpigmentation, dry desquamation or moist desquamation, fatigue, oral mucositis, xerostomia, tooth decay, dental caries, pneumonitis, radiation fibrosis, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cystitis, erectile dysfunction, vaginal stenosis, sterility, cerebral edema, alopecia. Nursing management of patients undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy. The nurse plays an important role in identifying, reporting and helping patients deal with side effects of radiation and chemotherapy. Anxiety. Related to, unfamiliar environment, lack of knowledge about chemotherapy and radiation, including administrating procedures, expected side effects and impact on usual lifestyle, and roles of admitted for treatment. Need for hospitalization to manage current side effects and or toxic effects for chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Financial concerns. Potential for premature death as a result of cancer. The nurse should VSS client on admission for O fears, misconceptions and level of understanding of chemotherapy and radiation therapy and its effects on body functioning, lifestyle and roles. O perception of anticipated results of planned chemotherapeutic and radiation regimens. O feeling about past experiences with chemotherapy and other treatment for cancer. O signs and symptoms of anxiety for example, verbalization of feeling, anxious, insomnia, tenseness, shakiness, restlessness, diaphoresis, tachycardia, elevated blood pressure, facial pallor and self-focused behavior. To reduce anxiety, V the nurse should orient the client to hospital environment, equipment and routines. V introduce client to staff who will be participating in care of patient and if possible maintain consistency in staff assigned to his or her care to provide feeling of stability and comfort with the environment. V assure client that staff members are nearby, respond to call signal as soon as possible. V maintain calm, supportive confident manner when interacting with the client. V encourage verbalization of fear and anxiety, provide feedback. V explain all tests that may be done before the initiation of treatment. V reinforce physician's explanation and clarify misconception the client has about how prescribed drugs work, expected side effects and potential drug toxicities. V provide a calm restful environment. V instruct client in relaxation techniques for instance, listening to music, exercise, yoga, guided imagery and encourage participation in diversional therapy. V perform action to assist client to cope with diagnosis of cancer and chemotherapy and radiation therapy and its side effects. V initiate financial and or social service referrals if indicated. V provide information based on current trends of client at a level he or she can understand, encourage questions and clarification of information provided. V encourage significant others to project a caring concerned attitude without obvious anxiousness. V include significant others in orientation and teaching sessions and encourage their continued support of the client, for example, visiting radiation treatment fields. V the use of printed materials, videotapes, CD-ROMs, verbal instruction and or demonstration can be offered. Stomatitis, mucositis, esophagitis. These are related to effects of chemotherapy drugs on the rapidly dividing cells of the gastrointestinal mucosa.
Educate the patient prior to radiation and chemotherapy treatment, V oral assessment and meticulous intervention to keep the oral cavity moist and clean and free from debris helps to prevent infection and facilitate nutritional intake. V assess the mucous membranes, the characteristics of saliva and patient's ability to swallow. V pre-treatment evaluation by the dentist to perform all necessary dental work before the initiation of treatment. V teach the patient how to perform oral care, proper tooth brushing, flossing, and use of fluoride trays to prevent caries. V oral care should be performed at least before and after each meal and at bedtime. V a saline solution of 1 teaspoon of salt in 1 liter of water is an effective cleansing agent. V 1 teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate may be added to the oral care solution to decrease odor, alleviate pain and dissolve mucus. V systemic and or tropical analgesics for alleviation of mucositis and pain in the throat. V polyferman, a synthetic version of keratinocyte growth factor is available to prevent and shorten the duration of mucositis. V feedings of soft, non-irritating high-protein and high-calorie foods should be offered frequently throughout the day. V avoid extremes of temperature, use of tobacco and alcohol as they cause erosion. V weigh the patient at least twice each week to monitor for weight loss. V involve the family members in assisting the patient to feed. Volunteers or home aides can assist. V encourage the patient to use artificial saliva to manage dryness. Nausea and vomiting. Related to stimulation of the vomiting center associated with chemotherapy drugs and stimulation of the visceral afferent pathway resulting from inflammation of the gastrointestinal mucosa. To reduce nausea and vomiting, the nurse should advise the client to V have a light meal of non-irritating foods before treatment is also helpful. Avoid spicy foods, caffeinated beverages such as coffee, tea and coke as they may stimulate vomiting. V record fluid intake to ensure that adequate volume is being consumed and retained. Avoid drinking fluids with meals. V to eat and drink when not nauseated. Encourage client to eat dry foods such as toast, crackers. V to take deep slow breaths when nauseated. V eliminate noxious sights and overpowering aroma from the environment because noxious stimuli cause stimulation of the vomiting center. V oral hygiene should be done two hours after each emesis to keep the mouth clean and fresh. V offer carbonated beverages or ice cubes to client to sip if nauseated. V use diversional activities such as watching television. V the nurse should administer cytotoxic drugs slowly and less contraindicated to decrease stimulation of the vomiting center. V if feasible, the cytotoxic drugs should be administered at night so that the client will sleep and experience less nausea. V administer prescribed antiemetic drugs prophylactic ally prior to chemotherapy such as metoclopramide, plasol, to decrease vomiting caused by chemotherapy. Dose, 10 mg orally, or by injection three times a day. Side effects, acute dystonic reactions involving the facial and skeletal muscle spasms and oculogeric crises. V3 drug combinations of serotonin and receptor antagonists, dexamethasin and aprepitant is recommended, is recommended before chemotherapy. Diarrhea. Both radiation and chemotherapy induce diarrhea. VA diet low in fiber, residue and high in roughage, should be recommended prior to treatment with chemotherapy. V avoid fried and highly seasoned foods or other gas-forming foods. V fluid intake and electrolyte supplementation are recommended such as 1 half strength Daros or Ringer's lactate or Dextra's saline 3 liters in 24 hours. V observe the stool for the number, volume, consistency and character of stools per day. V teach the patient to maintain a dairy or log to record episodes, aggravating and alleviating factors. V lukewarm sits baths may alleviate discomfort and cleanse the recta area if significant rectal irritation occurs. V the rectal area must be kept clean and dry to maintain skin integrity. V the nurse should inspect the perianal area for evidence of skin breakdown. V systemic analgesics should be warranted for painful skin irritation. Anorexia. V monitor the weight of the patient to monitor weight loss. V encourage the patient to eat small frequent meals of high protein and high calorie foods. V nutritional supplements can be helpful if the patient is severely malnourished or expected to have symptoms that interfere with nutrition for a protracted period or when bowel is being rest. V serve food in pleasant environment. Constipation. Instruct the patient to V eat high fiber foods such as bananas, oranges, cucumbers and vegetables like cabbage. V increase fluid intake 3 liters in 24 hours. V take stool softeners like Dulcolax as needed. V prescribe dysmotic laxatives which increases the amount of water in the large bowel such as lactulus can be given.
Dose, 3.13.7 grams per milliliter with other ketoses orally four times a day. Side effects, flatulence, cramps, and abdominal discomfort. Anemia. Encourage the patient to v eat foods that promote red blood cell production such as green vegetables, beetroots, fruit. v adequate rest. v administer iron supplements such as folic acid tablets 5 mg once a day orally. Side effects, gastrointestinal disturbances. Or erythropoietin to treat symptomatic anemia. Side effects, nausea, vomiting, dose-dependent increase in blood pressure, headache. v monitor blood for hemoglobin and hematocrit. Dot. Alopecia. Hair loss can be very distressing and a constant remainder of the cancer. Counsel the patient on the possibility of hair loss during treatment. Support patients by allowing them to express their feelings regarding the effect alopecia may have on their body image. Reassure the patient that hair growth starts two or three months after the end treatment. The texture and color of the hair may change when regrowth occurs. V suggest ways to cope with hair loss such as use of hair pieces, wigs, and scarves. V cut long hair before therapy. V avoid excessive shampooing, brushing and combing hairs. V avoid use of electric hair dryers, curlers and curling. V hair coloring and permanence should be avoided during treatment and for a few weeks afterwards since they may irritate the scalp. Radiation damage to skin related to fragility associated with malnutrition and dryness as a result of the effects of cytotoxic drugs on the subcutaneous and sweat glands, frequent contacts of the skin with irritants associated with diarrhea, damage of the skin and or subcutaneous tissue associated with prolonged pressure of tissues, friction or shearing, if motility is reduced. The nurse should instruct the patient to v inspect skin especially bony prominences for pallor, redness and breakdown. To prevent skin breakdown, V assist client to turn at least every two hours if activity is limited and keep skin clean and dry. V position client properly. Use pressure reducing devices such as pillows, gas or foam cushions, alternating pressure mattress, or air fluidized beds. V increase activity is tolerated. V apply a thin layer of powder or cornstarch to bottom sheet or skin and opposing skin surfaces axially and beneath breasts to absorb moisture and reduce friction. V lift or move client carefully using a turn sheet and adequate assistance and keep bed linen clean and wrinkle free. V limit length of time patient is in Fowler's position as client tends to slide down in bed which can cause surface abrasion and shearing. V to prevent drying of skin, encourage a fluid intake of 2500 mls day. Use a mild soap, lukewarm water and pat dry. Apply a moisturizing lotion or emollient to skin at least once a day. V keep treatment fields protected. Do not apply any lotions, creams, cosmetics or other products unless prescribed by physicians or radiation staff. V avoid applying tape, rubbing, or scratching in treatment area. V wear loose-fitting soft clothing such as lightweight cotton garments over the treated skin to avoid traumatizing the skin. Avoid wearing girdles and belts over the treatment fields. V use only an electric razor if shaving in the treated area. V avoid swimming in chlorinated or salt water during treatment. V avoid sun exposure or extremes of heat such as hot water bottles, heating pads, and sun lamps or cold such as ice bags or cold weather in treated area. V do not apply skin care products 4 hours prior to each treatment. V for treatment of breast. Do not wear a bra when possible. Avoid underwire bra. V wet desquamation of tissues produces pain, drainage and increased infection risk. Skin care includes cleaning with normal saline compresses or modified burrow solution soaks and protected from further damage with Vaseline. Hemorrhagic cystus. V advise the patient that symptoms may appear 3 to 5 weeks of radiation. V encourage hydration at least 3 liters in 24 hours. Stop fluids a few hours before bedtime and avoid caffeinated drinks. V observe manifestations such as urgency, frequency and hematuria. V administer supportive care agents to manage symptoms such as Uramax. V avoid smoking and spicy foods as they can irritate the lining of the bladder. V administer antibiotics. V analgesics can be given for pain relief such as ibuprofen 400 mg 3 times a day for 5 days. Dot. Reproductive dysfunction. V explain the possibility of cell damage of ova and sperms during treatment. Advise the patient of hot flashes, amenorrhea, decreased libido and osteoporosis. V-vaginal stenosis may occur when treatment field encompasses the vaginal vault.
To minimize this, a vaginal dilator for 15 minutes three times a week for at least one year. Vaginal dryness can be relieved with lubricants such as Kentucky Jelly or vaginal moisturizers. V-erectile dysfunction following radiation can be restored by help of urologists including pharmacologic interventions, devices and prostheses. V the ovaries can be shielded from radiation by surgically moving the ovaries out of the treatment field before apexy. The testicles are shielded from radiation if possible. V offer opportunity for sperm and ova banking prior to treatment for patients in childbearing age. Peripheral neuropathy. V advise the patient to look out for parenthesis, eryflexia, skeletal muscle weakness and smooth muscle dysfunction which can occur due to side effects of drugs. Pneumonitis. V explain to the patient that radiation develops two to three months after start of treatment and can be due to side effects of drugs. V monitor for dry, hacking cough, fever and exertional dyspnea. Fatigue. Explain to the patient that cancer-related fatigue is most commonly reported side effect of cancer treatment, occurring in 90% of patients. Offer patient education to the help alley anxiety. When receiving radiation therapy, fatigue gradually increases as treatment progresses, peaks in the last week of treatment, and slowly returns to pre-treatment levels three months after treatment ends. V encourage client to rest when fatigued, to maintain usual lifestyle patterns as closely as possible, and to pace activities in accordance with energy level. V encourage the patient to exercise such as walking programs are a way to keep patients active and not overtaxing them. V if the patient is anemic treat the anemia. Control symptoms such as pain, nausea, emotional distress, or sleep disturbance. V maintain good nutritional support and supplements, and hydration status helps to reduce fatigue. V teach the patient to remain active helps to improve mood and avoid the debilitating cycle of fatigue depression fatigue that can occur in patients with cancer. Nuclear medicine. Nuclear medicine is a branch or specialty of medicine and medical imaging that uses radionuclides and relies on the process of radioactive decay in the diagnosis and treatment of disease. In nuclear medicine procedures, elemental radionuclides are combined with other elements to form chemical compounds or else combined with existing pharmaceutical compounds to form radiopharmaceuticals. These radiopharmaceuticals, once administered to the patient, can localize to specific organs or cellular receptors. This property of radiopharmaceuticals allows nuclear medicine the ability to image the extent of a disease process in the body based on the cellular function and physiology. Diagnostic medical imaging. In nuclear medicine imaging, radiopharmaceuticals are taken internally, for example intravenously or orally. Then, external detectors, gamma cameras, capture and form images from the radiation emitted by the radiopharmaceuticals. This process is unlike a diagnostic X-ray, where external radiation is passed through the body to form an image. There are several techniques of diagnostic nuclear medicine. 1. Scintigraphy is the use of internal radionuclides to create two-dimensional images. The nuclear medicine whole body bone scan is generally used in evaluations of various bone-related pathology, such as for bone pain, stress fracture, non-malignant bone lesions, bone infections, or the spread of cancer to the bone. Thyroid scan with iodine-123 for evaluation of hyperthyroidism. 2. SPECT is a 3D tomographic technique that uses gamma camera data from many projections and can be reconstructed in different planes. Positron emission tomography, PET, uses coincidence detection to image functional processes. A nuclear medicine SPECT liver scan with technetium-99 meters labeled autologous red blood cells. A focus of high uptake in the liver is consistent with a hemangioma. How nuclear medicine differs from other diagnostic modalities. Nuclear medicine diagnostic tests primarily show the physiological function of the system, being investigated as opposed to traditional anatomical imaging such as CT or MRI. Nuclear medicine imaging studies are generally more organ or tissue specific, e.g., lung scan, heart scan, bone scan, brain scan, etc., than those in conventional radiology imaging, which focus on a particular section of the body, e.g., chest X-ray, abdomen pelvis CT scan, head CT scan, etc. In addition, there are nuclear medicine studies that allow imaging of the whole body based on certain cellular receptors or functions. Examples are whole body PET scan or PET CT scans, gallium scans, indium white blood cell scans, MIBC and octreotide scans. Certain techniques such as fMRI image tissues, particularly cerebral tissues, by blood flow, and thus show metabolism. 
Also, contrast enhancement techniques in both CT and MRI show regions of tissue which are handling pharmaceuticals differently due to an inflammatory process. Diagnostic tests in nuclear medicine exploit the way that the body handles substances in a different way when there is disease or pathology present. O hybrid scanning techniques. In some centers, the nuclear medicine scans use software or hybrid cameras on images from modalities such as CT or MRI to highlight the part of the body in which the radiopharmaceutical is concentrated. This practice is often referred to as image fusion or co-registration, for example SPECT CT and PET CT. Normal whole body PET CT scan with FDG18 is commonly used in the detection, staging and follow-up of various cancers. The whole body PET CT scan has become an important tool in the evaluation of cancer. The radiopharmaceuticals used in nuclear medicine therapy emit ionizing radiation that travels only a short distance, thereby minimizing unwanted side effects and damage to non-involved organs or nearby structures. Therefore, nuclear medicine therapies will also require appropriate patient preparation prior to a treatment and are done as outpatient procedures since the treatment has few side effects and the radiation exposure to the general public can be kept within a safe limit. The amount of radiation from diagnostic nuclear medicine procedures is kept within a safe limit relative to the established ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable, principle. The radiation dose from nuclear medicine imaging varies greatly depending on the type of study. Some nuclear medicine procedures require special patient preparation before the study to obtain the most accurate result. Pre-imaging preparations may include dietary preparation or the withholding of certain medications. Patients are encouraged to consult with the nuclear medicine department prior to a scan. Common nuclear medicine therapies include substance condition, 131 I sodium iodide hyperthyroidism and thyroid cancer, yttrium 90 ibrutumumab tioxetin, zevalin, and iodine 131 tocitumumab, bexer, refractory lymphoma, IMIBG, metayotabenzyl guanidine, neuroendocrine tumors, samarium 153 or strontium 89 palliative bone pain treatment. In some centers the nuclear medicine department may also use implanted capsules of isotopes, brachytherapy, to treat cancer. Patient and family instructions. Following samarium injection, explain to the patient that they may experience a pain flare or increase in pain 24 to 72 hours after injection and some pain relief as soon as one week after injection. Pain relief can last an average of four months. One drink plenty of fluids during the first 12 hours after injection. Two urinate as often as possible, flushing the toilet two to three times after urinating. Three do not have sexual contact with your partner for 12 hours after injection. Four if urine or blood gets on your clothes, store them for two weeks before washing and wash separately. Five for about eight weeks after the injection, tell any healthcare professional that you had samarium injection. Six full blood count at two, four, and six weeks after the injection. 7. If pain persists or increases call your radiation or medical oncologist. Conclusion. Cancer arises from abnormal, purposeless, and uncontrolled division of cells that then invade and destroy the surrounding tissues. Concise Medical Dictionary, 2007, page 107. Cancer diseases are chronic diseases which are devastating and depressing to the client patient. The pain caused due to cancer, side effects of drugs and treatment modalities can cause anxiety and depression to the client patient and family. Nurses play a major role in patient client and family education, assessment, and management of symptoms, coordination of care and providing emotional support throughout treatment. The patients need information on what to expect during planning and treatment, the onset and duration of possible side effects, self-care measures, and follow-up care. Published studies have consistently demonstrated that provision of information about presentation, prevalence, and duration of side effects reduces patients' anxiety level. Nurses need to be well updated on the trends in nursing pertaining management of cancer diseases among adults and children so that they are able to explain to the patient and family on latest information to help alley anxiety and thereby improve nursing care of these patients. As a result of this, there will be reduced number of referral cases following different treatment options at Cancer Diseases Hospital. Thanks for watching this video. Kindly share and click subscribe button for more educative content.